Disclaimer, the following video is an accurate description of a disturbing crime in explicit detail. Please, if you are sensitive to disturbing content and or get easily triggered, please do not watch this. Thank you. Emma Jane Magson, guilty of murdering boyfriend James Knight in drunken spat after retrial ordered. She claimed it was self-defence but she was convicted before the Court of Appeal ruled she could face new proceedings. A woman has been convicted at Birmingham Crown Court of murdering her partner with a steak knife after a retrial ordered by the Court of Appeal. Emma Jane Magson, 28, of Sylvan Street, Leicester, killed 26-year-old James Knight with a single stab wound to the heart in March 2016 after a drunken row between the pair. She denied murdering Mr Knight at her first trial, claiming it was self-defence, but was convicted later that year and sentenced to life with a minimum term of 17 years. However, the Court of Appeal ordered a retrial in a judgment handed down in January last year. Today, Friday March 5th, a jury again found her guilty of Mr Knight's murder, returning a majority verdict. Birmingham Live previously reported Magson was found guilty of murder and sentenced to life imprisonment at Leicester Crown Court in November 2016. But her lawyers told three senior judges that fresh psychiatric evidence suggests that Magson may have been suffering from diminished responsibility at the time of the killing. Claire Wade QC said Magson suffered from emotionally unstable personality disorder or EUPD for short, which she said lay in the appellant having endured a childhood which was characterised by exposure to domestic violence as well as parental neglect and being bullied at school. Mrs Smith said the case of Sally Challen, whose murder conviction was overturned by the Court of Appeal earlier this year, had brought issues around domestic violence to the surface. She said Magson had stabbed Mr Knight with whom she had a volatile relationship after he had been kicking at her front door in circumstances where the deceased had been violent to her earlier in the evening. She submitted that Magson's condition substantially impaired her ability to exercise self-control and that the EUPD provides an explanation for her conduct and was a significant contri contributory factor causing the applicant to stab the deceased. That evidence, Mrs Wade argued, meant it was more than likely not that, at the time of the offence, the appellant was suffering from diminished responsibility. She added that the experts also now agreed that the defence of diminished responsibility would have been available to her. Emma decided to go on a night out with a friend on Saturday the 26th of March 2016, which was coincidentally the Easter bank holiday weekend. That night, Emma had met up with James at a bar in Leicester City Centre. Louis Bullivant, her new solicitor, says door staff at the pub asked James to leave because they were concerned about his behaviour. There was an incident between James and the door staff which resulted in him being asked to leave and Emma decided to leave with him, she says. There's no doubt that they had both been drinking. They then argued in a taxi and the driver asked them to get out meaning they would have to walk all the way back home. During the journey, CCTV captured James grabbing Emma around the shoulder and neck and pushing her to the ground. A statement from Emma was read out in court in which she claimed she stabbed James in self-defence. She said, Once in the kitchen, he grabbed me around my throat and pushed me back. I was right next to the sink and reached out to grab something. I picked up the first thing which came to hand, which was a steak knife. The knife was in my hand and I hit out once. I didn't mean to harm him, I just wanted to get him off. James did not die immediately, in fact. He somehow ended up outside his brother Kevin's house a few doors away, lying face down in the street at about 2.30am. Kevin and a neighbour, Michael Laddick, came out to help, but Emma did not tell either of them that she had stabbed James. He was still alive when I came to them, says Mikkel. 
I wanted to turn him around, but she was sitting on him. He was face down, topless, and she was sitting on him. I asked if he was all right, and she said he was just drunk. In his evidence at the trial, Kevin said Emma told him James was drunk and had been beaten up by bouncers earlier on. When asked what impression he got from Emma, Kevin said that everything will be fine in the morning. He just needs to sleep it off. Kevin helped lift James into Emma's house and placed him on the floor of the front room. Kevin did not realise his brother had been stabbed and left, telling him, I will see you tomorrow. Right, I just want to put in a little personal note. What I don't understand is, if he's lying face down in the street with no top on, and he's got a stab wound going through his heart, how? where's the blood? Would you not see any blood? Would you not, would he, you know, because he had to pick him up and take him into the house, so would he have not seen, I don't know, maybe there's, you know, maybe there was things said in the court that haven't been reported, but I'm just reading off what's been, um, you know, reported to the newspapers and so on. But Emma rang 999 and asked for an ambulance, but again, did not mention that James had been stabbed. Ambulance, tell me exactly what's happened. Um, I don't know. My boyfriend's here and he's making weird noises. Right. What was he doing to make... What, what, I don't know. He's got a lot of blood on him. James, look at me, please. Do you want, do you want an ambulance to come and take him to the hospital? I don't know. I don't know if there's some old room or he's just playing me about. Is his eyes open at all? Is he awake? Well, to be honest, it looks like he's sleeping, but it ain't how he normally sleeps, because I live with him, so it ain't how he normally sleeps, that makes sense. Right. It looks like he's had a fight with someone. We'll get someone sent over to him. Um, it's been arranged. I mean, it might take a while, so I do apologise. It's bank holiday weekend and we're getting absolutely... Bad. No, that's fine. Don't worry yeah. about it. You've been out drinking all night? Yeah, I'm a bit honest, I think he's took some drugs. I just think he's too smashed, that's what I think. The prosecution claimed Emma deceived people into not saving James's life and described her as a cold, brutal and manipulative killer. However, her mother believes she simply didn't realise James was dying. I don't think she knew how serious it was in that moment, said Joanne. Kevin was awoken by banging Emma banging on his door screaming that James was dead about 40 minutes after he had seen them both outside his house. Kevin went to Emma's house and Mikhail was already there trying to save his life, having heard Emma's screams. We didn't know he had been stabbed, says Mikhail. The body was so clean, nothing on him, and only when I gave him mouth to mouth and the second breath raised his chest and that the wound opened and my eyes popped out, I just took the phone from Kev and told the operator that he had been stabbed in the heart. Then I was trying to do CPR for another 15 minutes and she was getting in my way like, I want him back, I just want him to wake up. I remember telling Kev to drag her off him and he did it. He took her off so I could carry on with the mouth to mouth and CPR. Emma phoned her grandmother who got a taxi straight there. The ambulance had taken James away, says Linda Allen. There were police everywhere. Eventually, they let me go through and she walked down the road to me. All she had got on was a little nightdress, no shoes, nothing. She put her head on my shoulder, crying. Linda noticed marks around her neck, which were also noted when Emma was later examined in police custody. Emma was not initially arrested, as police did not realise she was responsible for stabbing James. She was allowed to go to her mother's house where she told her mother that she thought she had killed James, who told police. Emma was then arrested and taken away after being allowed to say goodbye to her daughter. What's happened? He's been right, by we, come, of it. we come home yeah. and did had a fight in, outside Reynards. Yeah. Oh, but you see him fine. And then as soon as he come out here, he da he was losing the consciousness. Right. He was like, baby fan. And then like we dragged him inside, didn't we? Thinking yeah. he was unconscious. Right. So, so we dragged him inside right. and then like basically I just he was breathing heavily, oh, no. but he was still alive and then like, I noticed he was starting I basically I don't know, just get him. <laughs> so you've all been out tonight? No, I've no, been at home. You've I, been I, out with him. I don't care right now, just get Boys, listen, listen, listen we need to find out what's happened. I don't care as long as he's alive. What it is? Yeah, come on. 
I'm going to get some tape and seal it off. Just get some tape. So, no, they're working on him in there. This is the girlfriend. Unbelievable. Okay. Yeah, I was I was just giving you a resuscitation for fifty minutes and they came. Okay, Tina, you know what's up? I want my boy. I went to pick my mate. Okay, came let's say forty-five minutes ago. Okay, okay. 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 Okay.
Detective Inspector Kenny Henry from the East Midlands Special Operations Unit said, It has been very disappointing to have to be back in court four years on to see the case be heard before a jury once more. The evidence against Magson continued to be overwhelming and the fact that she has been convicted a second time just confirms that. Understandably, James's family found it incredibly difficult to sit through the first trial and hear her lawyers and deceit and how Magson effectively sat back and watched James die. It has been horrendous for this to be spoken about in court again. A spokesperson from Justice for Women said Miss Magson told a number of lawyers following the homicide, which may have influenced the jury decision, notwithstanding evidence of violence by night. We are very disappointed by the majority jury verdict, which flies in the face of the evidence. Magson had two previous convictions for violence from 2012, one for kicking and pulling the hair of another woman, and another for cutting a woman's face with a glass while she was drunk. Magson was found guilty by a majority verdict of 10 to 2. The murder trial also heard how Magson dragged a woman out of her home by her head in January 2016, which she said was because the woman would not leave. Magson was originally convicted of murder and jailed in November 2016. Her conviction was quashed and a retrial was ordered, following fresh psychiatric evidence which suggested she was suffering from an abnormality of mental functioning. During the second trial, jurors were given the option of finding Magson guilty of manslaughter. However, they found her guilty of murder by a majority verdict of 10 to 2. Mr Justice Jeremy Baker told her she would be remanded in custody to be sentenced for a second time on the 29th of March. She will be given a lo- she will be given a life sentence, but the judge will need to decide how long to set the minimum term, meaning the time before she becomes eligible for parole. She was previously given a life sentence with a minimum term of seventeen years. I just wanted to take this time to say my own little bit here. Now, obviously, since the case happened in 2016, I don't think there's any fundraisers. I did have a look, but I couldn't find any. Um, I, how, I will, however, link um, Justice for Women as I'm sure that there are plenty of other people that might have been through something similar. Maybe not so, you know, murdering their ab- abusive boyfriend, but maybe you're going through, you know, or you know someone who's going through a similar case or even minus the murder, just, just anything that, you know, a, a woman might need help with because I know that the world can be very biased towards women. So I will link that down below. Um, I'm going to also link um, a couple of knife prevention charities. These don't go directly to Magson's family. However, they do go to a charity that will help prevent anything awful like this happening again. I hope that you can find the time to donate and even if you can't, please just share this video, get it around and raise some awareness for this as um, you know, I'm sure it's been very hard on not only the victim's family but also Magson's family as well because if she really is you know, as uncontrollable of her actions as she makes out she is, then she really does need psychiatric help and you know don't get me wrong she still deserves a lifetime she's took someone's life but she also needs help so yeah i just wanted to say that quick note thank you for um all the uh support you've been showing the videos recently um they've been getting a lot of views which is good because it's been bringing a lot of awareness i'm not really fussed about the subscribers but thank you for doing that anyway um please share these videos, any of my videos, please share them because they help to bring awareness to these topics and these tragic, tragic events. Thank you.